in this video I will look at what is new in Revit 2026 structure. Let's jump right into it, starting with steel connections where a really handy feature has been added that will save some time. I can now modify connections after they have been created by clicking the edit button. This button was available before, but when trying to modify the connections nothing happened, but now I can add new elements to the connections like bolts and plates and change the dimensions for the already existing component. A bit similar to how type-based families behave. Let's test it out. I have here a custom-made steel connection in a real project I am working on right now. I am in edit mode where I will change the distance between the bolts. Let's set it to 60 mm to exaggerate and see what happens to the similar connections used. The connections are updated. In fact, all the connections sharing the same name have been updated. I will undo the last changes and test how it will work when trying to add a steel plate and a bolt to my connection. Select the steel connection, press edit in the main menu bar at the top. Then in the little menu bar I will hit the add button. I can now add components to my connection by selecting them. I select the grayed out steel plate and the bolt and hit finish. As you can see all my steel connections have been updated and the previously grayed out steel plate and bolt have turned pink. The color change is something I can do in a filter where I filter out steel type connections and assign them to a color. Let's undo the last part and move on to the next added feature. When creating a steel plate they will now have a meaningful material automatically assigned when created manually or by a steel connection. The default material of newly created steel plates depends on the unit under project units. There have also been added two new built-in parameters, the exact weight and paint area for the structural steel elements. Also available in steel beams and columns. The next update is the point-to-point -point steel modeling and is a new global option in structural settings to create steel element geometry starting from the exact start and end click point without auto shortening. I find the setting under manage and structural settings. A new header has appeared. I check the button to disable automatic shortening of steel elements during auto join. Let's see what happens when I connect a steel beam to two columns with point to point modeling. The beam did not auto shorten depending on the column. It defines the precise geometry, allowing you to visually check the correctness of steel elements. Now, what happens when I disable automatic shortening of steel elements during auto join? Yeah, the beam automatically shortens and adjusts to the column where it is connected. Now for the structural rebar updates, when selecting a set of rebars, there is now a little arrow on the top and bottom to show the start and end orientation shown in 2D and 3D views. You now have the opportunity to add a crank to your rebar for congested areas to prevent clashes. Just go to the properties menu and change the parameter for the start of the bar or end of the bar to crank. The crank shown here is a small pre-made one provided by Autodesk. To create a custom crank that fits your specific needs, head over to the project browser and locate structural rebar. From there you can duplicate the existing crank and adjust the dimensions to suit your project requirements. Let's do a quick test, add crank number 2 to our rebar and tweak the parameters to see how the crank updates in the model. Enter 10 for the crank offset multiplier. This value determines the crank offset and it's calculated by multiplying the multiplier by the bar diameter. Next the crank slope controls how steep the offset will be. Let's set it to 3 for this example. Finally the length multiplier defines how far from the start or end of the rebar the crank begins. Like the offset this value is also multiplied by the bar diameter. A great use case for the crank function is when you have two straight rebars in columns that are separated by a slab. Now let's adjust the crank so it will fit. When adding a crank you will also have the option to rotate the rebar so the crank will fit where you want it. 
the spacebar can also be used to rotate it 180 degrees. The final update in the Revit 2026 for structure is the ability to control the fabric sheet wire's position at cover. This can now be easily adjusted by selecting the fabric sheet and modifying the new built-in parameter called wires at cover. There are just two options available, major direction and minor direction, and that's it. Thanks for watching.